This meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This meeting is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar and over the phone. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the PowerPoint presentation is available on the project webpage at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 447094-1. For online participants, the GoToWebinar control panel should be visible in the upper right corner of your computer screen. If joining GoToWebinar on your mobile device, simply tap the screen to display the same options. The blue arrows in both images point to where you will find the question box. You can type a comment or question into the question box. Then click Send to submit your comment or question to staff. The red arrows in both images point to where you can find handouts, documents, and comment forms for this public meeting. Click the Handouts icon to see available handouts. Click on the file name to download. If you happen to experience a technical issue during this meeting, please type the issue in the questions box on the control panel on GoToWebinar. Or send an email to chuck at valerin-group.com to report it. You may also call 813-527-1276. Staff will do their best to assist you. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to explain the project goals, present the department's recommended improvements to help achieve those goals, and hear from the community about the proposed changes. This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720 by phone at 386-943-5367 or email at jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450 by phone at 850-414-4753 or email at jacqueline.paramore at dot.state.fl.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project website, and in the meeting notifications. This project is located in Brevard County, along West New Haven Avenue, also known as US 192, or State Road 500. The project begins at Interstate 95 and ends at Babcock Street. The project corridor spans through West Melbourne, Melbourne Village, and Melbourne. The Financial Project Identification Number, or FPID, for this project is 447094-1. As it works to take all steps possible to achieve its goal of zero fatalities and serious injury on state roadways, FDOT has identified certain corridors as candidates for additional pedestrian and or bicycle safety improvements as part of planned resurfacing projects. This segment of West New Haven Avenue was identified to have a high demand for different modes of transportation. The department conducted multiple studies on this corridor and determining factors such as current pavement condition, traffic speed, the high number of speed-related crashes, and poor connectivity for pedestrians and bicycles 
have guided the designs for this project. The recommended improvements we will review tonight were developed to help enhance safety throughout the corridor by encouraging safer driving speeds, providing more safe crossing opportunities, and enhancing pedestrian and bicycle connectivity and overall safety. To reach these goals, the department is proposing several improvements to the roadway. Some of these proposed improvements include resurfacing the entire length of the corridor, from I-95 to Babcock Street, extending some left turn lanes to increase visibility for drivers, reconstructing existing medians, upgrading the lighting in some locations, and constructing curb extensions, also known as curb bulb outs, to increase the overall visibility of pedestrians and reduce their crossing distance. Other proposed improvements include creating pedestrian refuges to decrease pedestrian crossing distances, realigning and upgrading crosswalks, reconstructing curbs, gutters, and ramps to meet the Americans with Disabilities Act requirements, upgrading or modifying traffic signals at 14 signalized intersections, providing six to seven foot wide buffered bicycle lanes in both directions, and narrowing and restriping travel lanes to accommodate the bicycle lanes and calm traffic. The project corridor has been divided into three segments. The first segment runs from the beginning of the project near Columbia Lane to Coastal Lane. In this segment, in addition to the resurfacing, the department plans to narrow the travel lanes from 12 feet to 11 feet and provide a six foot wide buffered bike lane. The posted speed limit will change from 45 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour. For a better idea of what these proposed changes might look like, this typical section shows the travel lanes have been narrowed slightly to 11 foot wide travel lanes and the bicycle lanes which are currently four foot wide have expanded to six foot wide providing safer conditions for all those using the roadway segments two and three of this corridor make up the majority of this project segment two runs from coastal lane to dairy road and Segment 3 runs from Derry Road to the project's end at Babcock Street. In addition to resurfacing, both segments have proposed changes that include narrowing travel lanes, constructing 7-foot-wide protected bicycle lanes, reducing posted speed limits, and adding multiple mid-block crossings with pedestrian-activated signals called pedestrian hybrid beacons, or PHBs. PHBs improve safety for pedestrians as they increase the visibility of the crosswalk. We will learn more about PHBs in a moment. So, let's see what these changes might look like. This is a typical section showing the existing conditions for most of segments 2 and 3. We can see there are 12-foot travel lanes and 4-foot wide bicycle lanes. In this proposed typical section for Segment 2, representing the roadway from Coastal Lane to Derry Road, we can see that the previously 12-foot travel lanes would be narrowed to 10.5-foot travel lanes to provide 7-foot wide protected bicycle lanes with traffic separators for added protection. Landscaping is planned for the medians, and the proposed speed limit in this area will be reduced from 45 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour. For segment three, the proposed changes are much the same. Once again, we can see the previously 12 foot travel lanes would be narrowed to 10 and a half foot travel lanes. The seven foot wide protected bicycle lanes with traffic separators and landscaping would continue through this section. However, on this stretch of the corridor, the proposed speed limit would change from 40 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour. All of these proposed changes will increase overall safety for everyone along the project corridor. As mentioned before, the FDOT is taking all possible steps to achieve its goal of zero fatalities and serious injuries 
on state roadways. With this in mind, multiple pedestrian safe crossing opportunities have been proposed along US 192. Most of these will be pedestrian crossings with pedestrian hybrid beacons, or PHBs. The following locations are being evaluated as possible locations for these PHBs. At Lago Drive, between Pearl Street and Circle Drive. At Vista Lake Circle, between Commodore Street and Catherine Boulevard. Between Gray Road and Hickory Street. At Haven Drive, near McDonald's at Wawa Way Drive. At Bry Lynn Drive, near the Melbourne Square Mall and possibly at Palm Boulevard. Public input is invited. So, what exactly is a PHB? A pedestrian hybrid beacon, or PHB, is an overhead traffic signal that is designed to provide increased visibility and protection for vulnerable road users at mid-block crossing locations. A PHB consists of two side-by-side -side red lights that are mounted above a single yellow light. The lights remain dark until they are activated by pedestrians wishing to cross. Once the PHB is activated, yellow lights will begin to flash, followed by solid red lights, requiring drivers to stop. When the red lights begin to flash, drivers must stop, but can proceed with caution once the crosswalk is cleared. Moving forward, the design on this project is in progress and anticipated to be completed in summer 2023 with a total cost of $1.5 million. The improvements on this project will be constructed entirely within the existing right-of-way and therefore will not require property acquisition. Construction for this project is funded for the summer of 2024 at a cost currently estimated at $13.8 million. We encourage your input and feedback about this project, and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by August 26, 10 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing. Those attending in person are invited to ask questions and share feedback with the project team during the meeting. To submit a comment for the project's public meeting record, please complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. To submit a comment or question online, please type the comment or question in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 447094-1. You may also contact the project manager directly by email at stefan.levine at dot.state.fl.us or by U.S. mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 542, the land Florida, 32720. You may also call the project manager at 386 943-5394 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. To learn more about these projects, go to www.cflroads.com. Type the project number 447094-1 in the search box at the top right and click Go. Then click on the project name. Public meeting materials are posted on the website now. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on this project. If you have comments or questions 
after the meeting. Please submit them by Friday, August 26, 2022. Contact information, a recording of this presentation, project documents, and other exhibits displayed at the public meeting are posted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 447094 dash one. Have a good evening.